Now, this can get really tricky. So what if we had something like um, float um, number equals really numbers whole numbers aren't descriptive you'd want to have it represented of something like a good name might be for something like if you had a position for a player in the game it might be um, a player position X or something so you'd have the X position of the player just trying to give it a better example for a variable name so if you have this float equal to something like uh, 7.5 or 7.6 I guess um, you could also have another con so we can put brackets around this conditional statement here and we can have multiple conditional statements so this is where things get a little more complicated so we could have or two two straight lines this is sh hold shift and hit the key in between the backspace and the enter and you'll get these lines um, and you get shift and you do two of these this is an or statement right here basically this means if either condition is true then enter the if statement so this here is true so if we took number and we say if number equals 10 for example this statement is false put brackets around it so it's sort of isolated um, brackets around these conditions just sort of uh, chunk them together um, you don't need them but it's a lot cleaner if you have brackets it'll be easier to read um, so this statement here is true we know that this statement is not true but because we use the or operator if either of these statements are true now it's going to go forward and it's going to enter so if we hit F5 and we enter this we will see that it actually gets in here because this statement is true um, Okay, and then when you hover over numbers, you can see what they are. You'll notice that this is 7.5999999. This is a, sometimes the floating points are a little off. So you got to be careful sometimes with these is that you can't really like if, um, yeah, you got to be careful with floating numbers because you can get into weird stuff like this where it's not exactly 7.6 just because of the way the computer works. Um, which I know sounds really scary, but um, let me just try something here. I think that's because, no, it's just the way the floating point rounded over. Um, this F sort of redefines, and if you put an F after a float, after you put, like, if you put the F at the end there, it sort of makes sure that the compiler sees it as a float value. Anyways, um, so, yeah, the 5.999 it's a little weird I know but that's why you don't want to normally do equivalent statements to floats it's because they're not always exact because of the way the fl the computer operates with flo uh, decimal numbers um, so basically something in the computer said that uh, it wasn't able to make exactly 7.6 so it tried to do the best it could um, it, it sounds weird I know but just computers aren't exactly perfect although you may be led to believe they are um, so you don't normally want to do equivalency with floating numbers um, but yeah so or statement but if say uh, this was true so uh, if we did that uh, and run this with F5 again I'm gonna tell it not to show me this dialog box again so that it doesn't keep coming up um, so neat both of these uh, statements are false so it doesn't get in there um, another conditional statement that we have is two and signs and this stands for and um, so basically what the this means is that um, both statements have to be true so basically in order for you ever to get in this if statement both of these conditions must be true so this would me would allow it in and then um, that would allow it in so because both of these statements are true because this is equal to 6 and this is not equal to 10 we get in um, and this can keep going as long as you want you can have as many uh, statements in here as you want but the yeah the the brackets really matter sometimes so right now with this statement um, the you kinda get used to reading these but what happens here is um, so because we have this or here um, this is probably going to end up so that it actually does go in because it's going to say and 
and then there's going to be this or at the end. So if and these two or that one. So it it's kind of it runs down the line sort of um, of conditional statements. So it'll run and say yeah, is that and that or this. So because this is or it'll go through. But if we were to do something where we put the brackets in here and put these two all in one conditional statement. So this whole thing is one statement. This would then read if um, if not equal to 10 or if true and because that is true and this is also true actually it will return true for this whole section and then this will say if equal to 6 and this statement which is now equal to true. So it's sort of like they they can kind of tree downward, like they can uh, they can branch downwards into like these sort of subgroups, and you can keep going further and further. Um, normally, you don't get into something that complicated, but it can get that complicated uh, depending on how things go. Oh wow! Okay, so that's if statements. Um, you know what? Uh, we're kind of running low on time, so we're gonna skip the second conditional statement for now and we're gonna go right into uh, a type of loop which is the while loop so this is another type of conditional uh, statement with the while loop but the while loop isn't for determining whether or not a code is run per se a while loop is pretty much it, it continues looping the same chunk of code over and over again until the condition in here is no longer true so if I say true and if I put in print um, Oh, bracket, quotation, hello, end line, quotation, bracket, semicolon. And if I hit uh, control F5 on, oh, well, I'm, I'm already debugging. So shift F5 to get out of debugging, control F5 to run it. Uh, what do you got a problem with? Oh, print F, print F. And then control F5. This thing is printing hello for the rest of eternity because true will always be true so it's never gonna end that statement um, probably gonna wanna close these um, but we could do something like uh, whole number or even better let's use a bool so we have bool um, uh, loop and loop is equal to true and then we could have something like loop in here so loop is equal to true but we could have something like loop equal false so now because loop is equal to false we can run that oh control f5 and it only prints it once we could also have something like um, whole number equals zero and then we could do something like um, at the start of the while loop plus um, well you can here's okay some more syntax for you uh, whole number is equal to whole number plus one is one way of doing this another way of doing this is whole number is plus equal well, plus equal whole number well that's bad plus equal one so um, what this means is whole number is plus equal one so whole number on every frame will increment by one um, another way of doing this is actually um, I don't so you also have this whole number plus plus or plus plus whole number um, what this is going to do is increment it by one as well you can also have uh, plus plus over here does the same thing um, I'll get deeper into those you don't want to use plus plus right now I probably shouldn't have explained it but I want to kind of cover everything lightly right now but you can do plus equal one and then you could have something like a conditional statement in here like if whole number is um, Oh, you know what I didn't cover with the if statements? Uh, greater than or less than. So if statements also have greater than and if le the, it, less than statements, they also have greater than or equal to or less than and equal to. Um, so uh, basically, if you, I, I'm pretty sure most people should understand what greater than and less than equals, but if a uh, whole number is greater than 10, then it will wait until whole number is greater than 10. Well, what this means though is if whole number equals 10, it will not enter here because it has to be greater than. So it has to be 11 or higher. But if we say greater than or equal to, then it, when whole number is equal to 10, it will get in here. The reason this is uh, interesting is because you could have something like plus two, 
where it's uh, it wouldn't actually reach. So if whole number starts at one and you add two to it every frame, it won't hit ten. Um, so that's why like greater than or equal to, um, they're they're sort of different depending on the situation. So yeah, it, just understand that there's two. Um, they're kind of situational based depending on what you're doing. You may want that extra loop, you may not. Um, but right, so plus equal one, um, one, and start at zero, and then let's actually just say equals when whole number equals five. So what's going to happen here? We're going to have loop equal to true. It'll let's literally walk through this first before we do anything. So loop equals true, whole number plus one. Whole number is now equal to one because it was zero plus one to zero. This will now be one. It'll print hello. It'll check if whole number is equal to five. Hello, hello, whole number is equal to one. So it's not equal to five. It will not set loop to false. Then it will go back and start at the top again. Whole number plus one. Now it's equal to two. Print hello again. Whole number is two. Is that equal to five? No, it is not. Rinse repeat until whole number is finally equal to five. It will enter here, say loop false. Then it will exit the loop. So if you hit control F5, that's what you should see is five hellos. And then if you want, we can actually walk right through this using uh, the debugger. So we can go down here, hit F10 while loop is true. Get in here, whole number. Now whole number is one. We'll print hello, as you can see. Uh, whole number one don't do anything we get back to the top of the loop you can see the arrow here moving uh, whole number is now equal to 2 uh, f10 over print you can see that now we're getting print again whole number equal to 2 that's not 5 continue arrow moves back to the top of the loop start again 3 print hello hello is printed whole number equal to 3 not equal to 5 so we move on continue 4 and then we've printed 5 times now we get into loop equals false. Loop gets to the top, checks if loop is equal to true. It's not. It continues outside of the statement. And if we had more code here, it would continue on. My voice is starting to go, and I think we've been going for quite some time. With this here, you should be able to start doing some things. Um, oh, no, you can't, because I haven't covered one of the most important aspects.